It's time. Welcome to Fortress Fine Woodworks. If you haven't been on my channel before, then I certainly hope you enjoy your experience. Also, feedback is helpful and encouraged. With that being said, let's get started. This project is going to be a simple one board project that anyone can do. My customers want their modern kitchen hood customized. It currently has a lower skirt that is sprayed white. Mm, no, not that skirt. I bring the real skirt home with me so I can replicate it using character hickory. The first step is to rip the three quarter thick board to width. I want the grain to be a bit straighter than it is, so I cut diagonally down the board with my track saw first. This step can be done with a skill saw or skipped altogether. Then I can rip the board on my table saw, leaving extra width so I can follow with a few cleanup passes. Skimming a 1 16th of an inch off each side creates a far cleaner cut with almost no burning. I'm going to be switching to a dado stack to hollow out the inset portion of the board. This process is quite tedious on the saw stop because I also have to change out the brake cartridge but I truly wouldn't risk giving up the added safety that this saw implements. And don't worry, I'm going to be showing you alternative methods to achieving this cut profile. I want the blade height to be a quarter of an inch, so I use a piece of plywood to reference the sawtooth. These teeth have flat top grinds as opposed to beveled grinds, which leave the finish cut nice and flat. Oh, and by the way, do you like this hoodie? It's pretty freaking sweet, huh? The artwork is hand-drawn and the hoodies are very comfortable. They come in regular or hooded format. You can check out Bridget's art at thevelvetdot.com and pick yourself up some extremely durable stickers or maybe a bookmark. And don't forget that sweet hoodie. And I'll of course put a link in the description. Doing a test cut confirms the correct depth of cut. It's time for the first cut on the board. I leave an inch and a quarter of wood against the fence and begin hogging away the middle. Then I flip the board around and cut the other side, leaving the same one and a quarter rib. If you aren't following what I mean, you will see shortly. Subsequent passes cut out the remainder of the middle by adjusting the fence and repeating cuts. This leaves a slightly wavy pattern in the hickory, so my plan is to clean it up on the router table. I set the bit high enough so it gently cleans up the inconsistent surface of the board, following the same process I did on the table saw. This leaves a much cleaner surface apart from a few minor burn marks. Other methods that can be used to create this exact format on a board are using a router with an edge guide, cutting the original board into three strips, planing the center board thinner, then gluing them back together, or even gluing three completely different strips together. The reason I chose this method is because it offers the best way for the grain to remain perfectly continuous through the board with no possible errors of misalignment. It was a dark and rainy night. He was enjoying the sound of rain and thunder when his insecurities suddenly sounded. You really think that looks good? Yes, Dusty. Yes, I do. I haven't even thought twice. <sighs> you think that looks good, huh? Why are you here, Dusty? Oh, you know, obsession and compulsion, imperfection, self-doubt and shame. It's the same reasons I've always enjoyed keeping you company. 
I'm just trying to enjoy a small project. Why does everything have to be so complicated with you? Well, if you were good enough, smart enough, and talented enough, then you wouldn't have to worry about me now, would you? You might as well be preparing yourself for some unhappy customers from what I see. You know... And so Corey thought he could win against his insecurities. But life's a back to the project. Whoa, that was a bit different. Anyways, it's time to sand the profile and get rid of any tool and burn marks. The belt sander makes quick work of this and I can move to hand sanding and card scraping for final detail work. Here's a quick sanding tip. If your sandpaper has trouble staying clamped in your sanding block, you can take smaller pieces of folded up sandpaper and compress them in the clamps. This tends to hold the sandpaper much better. For joining the final figure of the hood skirt, I first take direct dimensions from the original and straight cut my custom board into three rough pieces required. Then I can go ahead and miter the proper corners. Going slow and staying safe is key here. Be patient. This can also be done with a miter saw or a skill saw and a guide. Just for added insurance, I add a couple of dominoes in each joint for strength. If you've seen in my past videos, I add clamping calls to the outside with hot glue for a way to clamp the miters and get them as tight as possible. The glue I suggest is Type Bond 3 for its waterproof properties. A kitchen hood endures a lot of steam and heat. The last thing I want is for a glue joint to fail and have a hickory board fall in my client's spaghetti. Oh. Occasionally, I'll have to fiddle with the joints in order for them to close up all of the way. Clamping squares will hold the unit square while the glue sets up. At that point, I can dislodge the clamping blocks and scrape the hot glue residue. Fixing any slight gaps is as easy as adding wood glue and burnishing the corners closed, then touching it up with sandpaper. The last piece missing is the inner cleat you see on the white original. So I rip some of the cut off hickory to one inch wide, then cut them to length. I can glue and brad nail them in place using pencil marks as guides for placement. Make sure you use brad nails that won't go all of the way through the face side. Don't ask me how I know that, or maybe you should. 
The sides are a touch too long, so I trim them very slowly on the table saw to avoid the face side tearing out as the blade cuts downward. A final sanding to 220 grit prepares the wood for water popping. This is a process of saturating the wood in water to raise the grain. Then I can sand that rough grain smooth again before color correcting and finish. This prevents water from damaging the wood through the finish in the future. Lately, I have been using a water-based stain to color correct the light grain in the hickory. I think it takes away the harsh contrast difference between the heart and sapwood, but doesn't completely camouflage the two either. Look at that beautiful grain come to life when I spray on that Sherwood conversion varnish. This is definitely my finish of choice for many reasons. I have a full comparison video of breaking down the many aspects of this finish. You can view that video by clicking here or there will be a link in the description. I don't actually have clips of me attaching the skirt to the hood so this SketchUp model will help. Internal pocket holes just screw the main hood to the lower skirt. The hood usually always installs by using the supplied bracket from the manufacturer. And now it's time for final shots. The grain matching and ribbed profile is a true success and adds a lot of professionalism and interest to the otherwise simple addition to this white hood. Despite what Dusty thinks, I think this project came out beautiful and I am very thankful for my customers and I'm also very thankful for you. I kindly invite you to like and subscribe. It tells YouTube to share my video to others. and. Maybe I'll see you around. It felt so real. <laughs>